Welcome back to channel everyone. In this video, I'm going to talk about how you can update your secondary list item in SharePoint Online when there is an item change in your primary list. So this is my source list which I've created and this is my data list which I've created. Both the list have same data. So what I want, if I make any changes to this particular list, the item will be updated in this particular list. So that means if I create a new item, the item will be created here. And if I update any of these existing items, so the item will be updated here. So I've created one of the user ID column that is automatically created ID. If you haven't checked my previous video, I'll provide link in the description. You can check out the previous video how to generate a unique user ID. So on the basis of this user ID, I'm going to update item in this particular list. So let's just talk about that, how we can do this using Power Automate. I'll go in my Power Automate. I'll create a flow here. And it will be instant flow and skip this one i'll name my flow as update item and trigger point share point will be when a new item is created or modified so what i want when my site address when there is in my source list basically when there is item created or modified in source list first of all i'll fetch the sharepoint get items and i'll fetch the data from the data list so this is source list, this is the data list. And uh, once the data is there, I'm going to apply uh, one of the filter query that's array filter basically. That is filter array. And the filter array will be values from this get item and uh, what i want to compare here is that when the user id so i'm basically comparing on the basis of this user id so when the user id of get item is equal to the user id of my current list so what this filter array will do it will filter the value of that item which match the user id of this get item value and the user id of my current list if match it will filter it will get the row data of that particular item right so next step what i'm going to do is i'm going to put a if condition here now I'll go in my control section I'm gonna apply length length of dynamic content of this particular body all right just click on OK is Either you can select equal or not equal, it's up to you, is not equal to zero. That means if this contains any uh, you know, value, I'll go in the update item section. If not, I'll create an item. Now I have to add an action that is my control action for each that's basically apply to each and the apply to each will be a body of filter array that means whatever the result that filter array gets 
to that particular item I will update my SharePoint list item update item site address will be our dev site and uh, where we want to actually update the item will that will be into my this particular data list and uh, here the unique identifier will be my item it will be my item ID so it is basically so it is basically the uh, item ID of my current item in this particular list and uh, title I can just put the title user ID will be the user ID username will be username of basically need to map all these column here department value status value is equal to so status value uh, you can either just pick close or you can put the custom value whatever you want so that's there an update item if the filter array length is equal to zero that means I have to create new item to this data list I'll go and create item select my site name select my list name and I want to create and map column accordingly title will have the title user ID username will have username department value will have will have the department value and status value will have the status value okay so once again we'll look that what we have created when there is a new item created or modified in this particular source list then I will fetch <coughs> the get item of this particular data list to actually match the condition of match the basically user ID of both the list which is we are doing by this filter array we are filtering out the user ID of this particular source list and this data list once that is matched only the result of that will goes out to here in this my condition and here what I'm just doing is I'm comparing the length of this filter array if the length of this is not equal to zero that means greater than zero then we will update the item in this data list and if it is zero then I'm gonna create a new item here in this particular data list so let's just save this one and I'll go in my source list here and what I can do is I will just update the existing one so I'm just updating the test one which is having the user ID 1005 and that item already exists here also I'm gonna just say that test one updated and click save we'll wait for the flow to run and we'll see the result then 
Now you can see your uh, run history that the flow has been successful. And if you go into your data list, you'll see that this is updated here, which update we have made here. So if you can go into your flow history, you will see that it's ran successfully. I'll check in this condition one that this is true expression and it has updated the item in this particular one. So next step, what I've done is I've created one more item here. So it should <clears throat> get updated with the new item created here. So that's there. When you create a new items, that's the test tree, which was not previously they have created that one. It just created here. And if I update the item here, it has updated the item here. So that's the way you can update your secondary list when there is a new item created or modified. It will check in your destination list whether that item already exists there. If the item exists, it will update the item. If the item don't exist, it will create the new item there. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you like this video. It's all the purpose for you. Thank you so much for watching Learn and Tech. Don't forget to subscribe.